In this final data validation course for Google Sheets, I'm going to show you how to change a drop down menu based on the choice of another menu. So instead of explaining it, let me show you what I want to achieve. So here I have a list of items. And if I use the drop down, it says pizza, ice cream, salad, or hamburger. I have pizza here, and these options for the pizza are as follows cheese, olives, onions, or pepperoni. I can change these as I see fit with no worries. Okay, what about if I change to ice cream? I don't want cheese on my ice cream. And as you can see, we've got a little invalid error warning here. We can then choose the drop down menu and choose the toppings for our ice cream. And as you can note, they have all changed. So caramel syrup, cherry, chalk sprinkles, hundreds and thousands. Let's go some hundreds and thousands. What if we want salad? I don't want hundreds and thousands on my salad. So again, we get a little invalid error warning and we've got our drop down. And this time around we have crouton, mayonnaise, olive oil, and vinegar. Vinegar sounds like a goer. Lastly, we've got hamburgers. And this will change to another set of toppings, as you can see here. Cheese slice, lettuce, meat patty, and tomato. Meat patty sounds like a go too, so we'll click on that. So there's one way to get this done, and I highlighted it in our uh, second tutorial on data validation, way back when we did lists from ranges, where we used uh, relative items. This can be a little bit messy in the long run and not a great way of, of uh, storing data on your Google Sheets. So let's head back to our change on choice tab and open up these items here. Let's scroll over. So imagine these are in a separate sheet that I usually keep called a notes sheet. So I generally create it and then I hide it. You can hide a sheets tab by right clicking and going to hide sheet. You can even protect the sheet as well as you can see here. Okay, so first I have a list of items. These items are my pizza list, ice cream list, salad list and hamburger list. And this is a much easier way or mu much more accurate way of displaying your data instead of having a random list of unknown quantity of items along the side here. And it's much easier when you're trying to convert this list into a database or something like that down the track. So for all our pizza items, we have our toppings and then our ice cream, we have those toppings, salad and hamburger for all those toppings as well. Our next step is to get a unique list of all our items. We don't want repeats of these pizzas, ice creams, and salads. So first off, we need a unique list of all our items. So we do this with the unique function. So here we've got our unique function and it selects from I3 through to I19. It could be I3 through to I100 or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And what it does is basically goes through the whole list. It could be a scrambled list of items and finds just the unique item of each one. Then to help our users out, we want to sort it and we sort it alphabetically. And this is our end result. If we have a look at our data validation for that uh, first item, we can click on A2 here, right click, go down to data validation. And you can see I've selected the range from F3 through to F8. I've got a little bit of an overlap just in case they, we add some more in. Okay, so we've show drop down list. We'll reject the input and we'll show validation help hit save. Cool. And this is our list of items here. Okay, so before we move on to our options, we need to create an option list that appears just for those particular items. We can do that by filtering them out. So before we start, have a look at what happens in this column G when I change the item. So if I change it to ice cream, you can see that the toppings have changed. If I change it to pizza, same again, salad changed again. So what's going on? Here I've used a filter and a filter reduces down your items to a selected amount based on the values that you put in or the arguments that you put in. The first argument in the filter is the range that you want displayed. And for us, we want our toppings displayed. So I've selected here J3 to J100, which is our list of toppings. Now you can have as many arguments as you want, but we only need one argument here. And basically what that says is if any item in column I is equal to A2, then we want to display those toppings. So for example, right now we have salad in A2. So A2 equals salad. So it's going to say, all right, I found salad here and I want to display the J here, I want to display all the items of those salads. So it's going to be the croutons, vinegar, olive oil, and mayonnaise. And if you have a look over here, that's what they're being displayed. 
To create this options list, all we need now is to use our data validation and select these options. So what we do is right click, go down to data validation, and we choose list from a range and we select the range G2, and here I got a bit crazy and selected G100. It doesn't matter. List from range will only uh, select those cells that have values in them and ignore anything else. We showed our drop down list. Uh, this time we'll reject the input and show validation help and click save. So now when we've got our salad, it'll come up with our mayonnaise, ice cream, it'll come up with a warning and we'll say caramel syrup and it'll change as we go. I hope you'll find that useful in your own projects. That's it for the data validation course for now. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you like the course, please hit like. And if you want to see more courses, why not hit that subscribe button? I'll catch you in another tutorial.